Throughout Tennessee, there are regions that have a rich, unique history that would be lost and forgotten were it not for those that are dedicated to preserving it. Rob Wiles takes us to a little town near Chattanooga where a fascinating chapter of history lives on thanks to the Dunlap Coke Museum. The music of Ed Brown and Billy Gaston is about the loudest thing you're likely to hear at the Coke Museum in Dunlap these days. But that wasn't always so, according to Carson Camp of the Sequatchie Valley Historic Association. It would have been a very busy, noisy, smoky, smelly operation with 350 employees at their peak, with Dunlap only having 700 people in the whole town. So uh, over half the population was involved in the mining operations here. The mining and coke operations closed down in the 1920s and might have been lost forever if not for Carson and his family who took a deep interest in a place that became covered with tons of garbage, as Carson explained in a documentary, Coke Oven Slaves, which was made about the park. This was the town garbage dump. This was the absolute worst place in Sequatchie County to visit. So this is what's left of the coke ovens? Over of the there outside. Ed Brown and Bill McKee play big parts in the restoration and upkeep of the park. Each artifact tells a story of a different time when even getting home from work would seem unusual to us. One thing that's real unique are what is called a rail horse. This is a seat that a coal miner would sit on when he got off work in the evening and came down the mountain and they can come down the uh, old tram track very fast. Mm -hmm. Sounds a little dangerous there, but uh, fun maybe. They didn't lose any miners. <laughs> <laughs> so many people does not know what Coke is when you say that, what, what it refers to here. You think of Coca-Cola and there's other, uh, that word's used in other things too, but we have samples of what Coke is and it's just basically pure carbon where the uh, impurities have burned out of the coal by controlling the airflow to it. And so you wind up uh, with what we call coke made from coal, and it's, think of it the same thing as charcoal. Charcoal's made from wood. The processes and machines are of interest to Carson Camp, who collected almost all of the things in the museum, but it's really the photos, and more importantly, what they say that makes this place important. There is a story behind every tool and implement and things that the miners used, and this was a working man's occupation. And those people have normally been forgotten in history, but they played a major role in the development of this area. Carson doesn't have to look very far to find people who played a role at this place. His own mother, Gladys Camp, still has vivid memories of how the place was when she was a little girl. I remember my brothers going to work when they were too young to go to work, but back when they was that, you, they weren't any rules. I guess you just went to work whenever you could get a job at doing anything. And I remember uh, them coming home so many nights with their breeches legs or overall uh, wet to their knees where they had just knelt in water all day digging coal. Carson has even conducted interviews of the folks whose families lived and worked here during the coal and coke boom. Sadly, time is taking more and more of those people. So as the people who lived their life here slip away, keeping the things they left behind becomes more important. There were several hundred houses built up here at the time for the coal miners and the coke oven workers to live in. There was a total of about 350 employees at one time. And this began in 1899 and it actually, the company went busted in 1927. 
But during that time, there was a lot of uh, feeding the economy around here. The train come up in here and got the coke and carried it out and took it down the valley to Chattanooga, where the majority of it went, to the foundries over there. They had their own company store. They had their own doctor, blacksmith, carpenters, veterinarian for the mules. And it was a culture unto itself, which no longer exists. Except in memory, and in the carefully connected and lovingly preserved Coke and Coal Museum in Dunlap.